Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are going through 2022's external exams for Queensland, Australia. We're looking at paper one, which is our simple familiar style questions for general maths. And we've already covered networks multiple choice questions in a previous video. So in this video, we are just focusing on short answer question 21. Let's get right into it. The parts connecting various landmarks in a park are shown. So we've got bus stop, coffee shop, a duck pond, playground, a rose garden and a water feature. Firstly, let's identify one cycle that passes through the rose garden and the playground. It's worth one mark. So let's remember that what a cycle is to start off with. That's key vocabulary. It's a pathway through a network. It's going to start and finish in the same place. It's not going to pass through any points more than once other than the start and finish. And we've got to make sure we hit that rose garden and the playground. So there's our rose garden. There's our playground. Now, we don't need to go through every single point in the whole network. In this situation, we've just got to identify a cycle that goes through both of these locations. So there could be multiple choices that you could have made. Lots of possible cycles. You've only got to come up with one. So here are some of the possibilities that I found. Starting with the Rose Garden, we could go up to the Duck Pond, out to the Playground, to the Water Feature, back to the Rose Garden. Or we could have gone rose garden out to the water feature. So we're basically doing that in reverse. Then up to the playground, out to the dark pond, back to the rose garden. Once again, another cycle. Um, we could have made it even more complicated if we wanted to. Rose garden to the water feature and then down to the bus stop, out to the coffee shop, out to the playground, dark pond, and that we've actually passed through all the points with that particular cycle and so on. So lots of possibilities. You only got to come up with one. I feel sorry for whoever marked this particular question because they would have had to check lots of different possibilities. So we get our first mark on this question for coming up with a cycle. So obviously if you're marking this, you're going to be checking to make sure we're starting and finishing in the same place and that we pass through R and we pass through P. Part B, identify whether the graph is Eulerian or semi-Eulerian and justify your response. And this is worth two marks. So in this case, identifying which it is, is our first mark. The justification is the second mark. So let's work out what this language means. What does it mean to be Eulerian? Well, it means it passes through every edge only once and starts and finishes in the same place compared to a semi-Eulerian, which also passes through every edge only once and starts and finishes in different places. You'd also remember, and this is a key thing to remember, that in an Eulerian graph, every vertex has even degree. Whereas if it's going to be semi-Eulerian, it'll have exactly two vertices of odd degree. So in order to come up with our justification, we need to look at each vertex and work out what the degree of each vertex is. Now, do you remember what degrees are? How many paths are coming out of that vertex? So let's look at um, our graph and work out what that is. Now we're not actually being asked to identify the Eulerian path, um, just explain why it's one or the other. Um, hence we need to know that key information. You could sit there and spend ages and ages and ages and try and work it out with all different types of pathway mapping, not necessary. Okay, so firstly if we look at D, and I'm just going to bring my mouse up to D, we've got one, two, three, four paths coming out, so it has a degree of four. R has one, two, three paths coming out of that vertex, so it's got a degree of three. W has a lot more, it's got six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We've got B with two coming out of it. C, one, two, three coming out of it. And P, one, two, three, four pathways coming out of that vertex. So now we've actually looked at those, we can see straight away that for it to be Eulerian, we've got to have those vertices will all have even degree. And we can see that's not the case. The Rose Garden, R, has an odd number of degrees, as does C, the coffee shop. It's got an odd number of degrees too. So it's not going to be an Eulerian graph, which means you won't be able to find a path through the network where you start and finish at the same point and go through every path. However, it will be semi-Eulerian, where you will be able to start and finish at different places, but cover every edge. So we've now identified that it's semi-Eulerian, and we've got our justification up the top, which is our second mark. 
So it's important to write a statement at the end. Hence, the graph is semi-Eulerian, as are exactly two vertices of odd degree, R and C, and the rest have an even degree. So now we've got our two marks. Next question, construct an adjacency matrix from the graph using the vertex order listed in the key. Um, so we need to understand here, once again, some vocabulary, what is an adjacency matrix? So a good place to start is using that order, B, C, D, P, R, W, down one side, and then across the top, the same order there as well. We need to have those um, rectangular looking brackets. And it's also good to have from and to labeled on the top and the bottom so that we can identify where we're going from one place to another. Now, if we look from what we're basically counting is how many paths go directly from one place to another. Now, from there are no cycles in this particular one or loops. So if we look here, there's no little circles coming around individual vertices. So basically anywhere from B to B, C to C, D to D and so on, it's all going to be zero. We've got to have that leading um, diagonal will be all zeros. But we can just come through from one to another. I'm going to show you the first one and then we'll fill out the remaining rows individually. You can pause the video if you want to check those for yourself. But from B to B, no loops as I mentioned, so the answer here would be zero. From B to C, there is one path. So from B to C, one path. From B to D, there is no direct way of getting there in one step. So there'll be no pathway there. Same with B to P, no direct way of getting there. So that's a zero. B to R, we can't get directly from B to R. We have to go through W, so that's a zero. But from B to W, there is one path. So we can see that I've completed this first row correctly. You're going to basically follow that process through for each of those as we go through the adjacency matrix. Um, we can see that some numbers are coming up as twos. For example, we can see down here from D to P, there are two pathways. We can check that from D to P. We can see there's that second pathway there. Um, we've got another one here from R to W. So if we look here, R to W, there's two pathways to get there. So you may have numbers that are not just zeros and ones in an adjacency matrix. Now our first mark was for correctly putting the right values into the matrix. So getting these numbers right, zero, one, and two, that was our first mark. And our second mark was actually having the matrix set up properly. So from, to, labels on each side, having those rectangular brackets, that was our second part. So there's a communication element to it as well as getting the numbers right. You'll notice here the word correctly. So if you got one single value in that whole matrix wrong, you couldn't have got the mark. So it's important to check your work on these kinds of questions. A good way to check your work, if you look here, for example, because this is not a directed graph, and what I mean by that, there's no arrows. So a good thing to do for checking is, for example, from B to W, there's one pathway from B to W. Now, if I go backwards, that means from W to B, there should also be a one there as well. So that match should be the same in reverse. It's a good way of checking your work. Well, did you find this video helpful? I sure hope you did. And here's how you can engage with us further. Firstly, you could like and subscribe to the channel. You could share the video with someone by sending it to them on an email or on social media. You can even follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And you can tell us in the comments. But if you have any questions, the best place to ask those is by email. McClutchymass at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. I hope you enjoyed our video. Have a wonderful day.